combinations like pineapple, cucumber and dill, or classic country style. And since it's packed with satisfying protein, you'll want to try all of Hood's amazing flavors. Don't miss out on delicious. Yours truly, always good, always Hood. History is being made as we speak. The first meeting between the heads of North Korea and the United States will take you inside the room where it's happening. We're getting ready for some history in our city, too. We've got your complete guide to the Stanley Cup champion Capitals victory parade tomorrow. Plus, I'll have your hour-by-hour -hour victory parade forecast all ready to go. And Darren has a look at the Stanley Cup's wild weekend in D.C. Later, this is more than a summer concert. It's neighbors helping neighbors. The news at 11 starts right now. Up first tonight, that breaking news from overseas. Good evening, I'm Adam Longo. We're going to get to everything you need to know about the Caps victory parade in just a moment. But first, we want to brief you on a historic night in Singapore that's happening as we speak. This summit meeting between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. It is history that started with a handshake here just about two hours ago. The two men posing for cameras outside of the negotiating site and once more inside where they offered brief statements. We'll hear first from President Trump, followed by Kim in his own voice, then through his translator. Listen. I feel really great. We're going to have a great discussion, and I think tremendous success. It'll be tremendously successful. And it's my honor, and uh, we will have a terrific relationship, I have no doubt. <laughs> The past fit, uh, worked as fetters on our limbs, and uh, the uh, old prejudices and practices uh, worked as obstacles on our way forward, but we overcame all of them, and we are here today. Then it was on to the negotiating room and down to business. Trump and Kim, the only other people in the room, they're translators. Now, those talks clocked in at just under an hour. It's now being followed up by a larger meeting with staff and a working lunch. President Trump's ultimate goal is to eliminate North Korea's nuclear weapons program. The summit described by the White House as the first step in that journey. In one big way, the summit meeting is already a win for Kim Jong-un and his legitimacy on the world stage. He got a rock star's reception when he left his Singapore hotel to go sightseeing. But he's certainly not a rock star. Let's bring this into context for you. Kim Jong-un has ordered the killing of his half-brother and ordered the execution of five government officials with an anti-aircraft gun because they issued reports that apparently enraged him. It's also worth noting he leads a dictatorship that punishes citizens by sending them to prison or forced labor camps known for their systematic murder, starvation, and torture. None of this up for discussion at this summit meeting today. Now let's recap the headlines so far from the North Korea summit. President Trump held a face-to-face -face meeting with Kim for just under an hour. He called it very good. That's been followed by a wider joint meeting with staff that's still underway. No details yet on any progress made, but President Trump is set to talk to reporters at 4 a.m. our time and depart Singapore at 7. And one final note on this tonight, just before that historic handshake, the president tweeted that his top economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, suffered a heart attack and was being treated at Walter Reed. Kudlow's wife tells our partners at the Washington Post that he's doing fine tonight and receiving excellent care. Certainly our thoughts are with him and his family. All right, D.C., we're just 12 hours away from the Caps victory parade. The News at 11 team has you covered on this big story tonight. We're going to tell you where to find a great spot to check it out. We're going to fill you in on road closures and parking restrictions and the forecast for the big event. But let's get started with your insider's guide. Here's Pete Muntean. This is a big parade with big closures. Here is the National Mall. Consider it a barrier you cannot drive across from 9.30 to 3.30 Tuesday. Here is the parade route. It starts around 23rd Street Northwest, trucks down Constitution Avenue to 7th Street Northwest. This parade has quite the perimeter, about a half square mile of streets closed or under parking restrictions. If you usually drive downtown, we have the must-read list of closings on our website and app. Here are the highlights for now. The 14th Street Bridge, the 12th Street Tunnel, and the 9th Street Tunnel closed starting at 930. So many of you will be taking Metro instead. The agency is extending.